Oh, Crystal Talis. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Right. You Talis. Once again, we've gone live. We're now live, and we've started by laughing because of what we've just done. Um, this is the Mates FC podcast. Um, it's not real podcast because we don't know how to do them, and no one's shown us. Um, my name's Dave. Uh, Dave Chase. Um, that's me. I don't play football. And joined tonight by, let's have Danny. Who are you? I'm Danny Warner. I'm a mates ambassador. Um, and I'm the captain for Mates FC. And uh, he's playing the part tonight of uh, a Spanish footballer that we've uh, got on loan for the season. Right, then we've got... Si, gracias. Yeah, get all the words, didn't you? Um, yeah, and then we've got <laughs> Crystal Tallis. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi, um, I'm Andy Tallis. I'm uh, one of the coaches um, at Mates FC, as well as uh, Football Fitness. Um, I'm also the welfare officer at Mates FC and a mental health first aider. Lovely. Then we've got uh, Simon Greenstreet. That way. Hello, everyone. I'm, <laughs> I'm Simon <laughs> Green. Um, I'm, I'm Simon Greenstreet. <laughs> I'm an ambassador for Mates FC and, uh, yeah, help coach and train the team and general, general helping hand. And Football Fitness Club. And Football Fitness Club as well, yes. Lovely. Right. Um, anyone that hasn't watched this before, um, you'll be glad of that. Um, <laughs> but Mates FC, we're a slightly different football team in that um, we want no commitment. Uh, we want to get you back into football if you've, if mental health or injury or anything like that has stopped you playing football in the past. Um, we want to get you back into football. And a massive thing, people, the trouble with mental health, People don't recognise symptoms. People don't know why things happen to them. And to, uh, a lot of the time, people don't recognise that they're suffering from um, mental ill health. So if you don't feel like leaving the house, full stop, there's probably not much chance that you feel like going on a pitch and playing football. And that leads to not playing at your best, let, feeling you're letting yourself down, feeling you're letting your team down, your team might not be happy with how you're playing and eventually it just leads you to leave the team and lock yourself away in the house again and don't do anything. And that one passion that you had, the football that you've loved since you were a kid, the camaraderie around it, the um, football training, the chats, all of that sort of stuff, that all goes. And you end up even more alone than you were before. We want to reverse that. We want you back out there. If you want to come and play for 10 minutes, play for 10 minutes. Do whatever you want to do. Um, we, if you, We literally just put the events up, the games up as an event. Put your name down for it. On the week of the event, if you... Have we lost I don't know. Him? I can hear you, Danny. I thought you paused as well. Oh, I was looking at me. you and you weren't moving. Yeah, I can't hear him. Dave's paused. D Dave's paused. Does that mean... Like... He's either yeah. paused or he's seen something that outside and he's... Does the live Dave... I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping we're still live. Um, if somebody yeah, who is watching could live. just say that we are still live and we'll we'll carry on. Uh, yeah. We can't see that, can we? Can only Dave. Uh, unless they only Dave public, public comment that goes to all of us. Yeah, I think you're saying uh, only Dave sees that. Oh, well. can they? I think. Oh, he's he, gone. I think he's gone. No, he's so gone. I think he'll be back. He'll dial. He'll dial back in. He looked like um, Littlewood's catalogue, didn't he? Are we he still did, yeah. Um, so hopefully, uh, if we are still live, then um, we'll just we'll just carry on as we were. So uh, I think, as as Dave was saying, um, you know, we're we're a football team, a little bit different um, because there is no commitment. Um, you can just you can just come along and join in any of the matches that we've got. Um, uh, you can come to the training. Um, uh, sorry, Dave's saying he's just restarting it, so hopefully he'll come back in in a minute. Um, 
yeah so uh sorry so yeah so we're a team with a bit of a difference you can come along training you can come to the matches and um, there's no commitment if you're coming back from injury a long-term injury and you want to just come and give it a try and just see see how you get on then you can do that um and it's really good i mean we try and get uh, other teams to play most weeks if we can um we're also uh, looking at a minute about um getting a lead team as well so we're having that discussion um but yeah it's just football for everyone really uh, we've got um a couple of girls um that are that come along and they play in, in the matches as well so really is open to everyone doesn't matter about ability we've got guys that have never played before um, and then we've got guys that have played at really high standard before. Um, and like I say, have either fell out of love for some reason with it and now I've, I've got that love back for it or through injury. Um, so, yeah, really open to everyone. Um, I don't know if there's anything else the other guys want to add to that. I was just going to say when you were talking about um, it really is for any sort of any ability um, if you haven't played for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever, even if you haven't played at all, like you mentioned the girls, um, one of the girls that comes, played her first game and you wouldn't know it was her first game. She, um, don't get me wrong, she wasn't lying to Messi, she wasn't like taking five players on, but she had a really good touch, really good pass. Um, I was really impressed with how she played in that first game um, and I think she really enjoys it as well. So uh, one thing I was going to add is that a few people, I think... Is that is that stigma about um, not knowing anyone, and what you what Dave's mentioned before as well? What if I get there and uh, I don't know, lose the ball in the first two minutes or whatever? There's a few people I've known who've put it off, put it off, put it off, and then they finally come and they've really enjoyed it. I've not heard anyone say go away and, and say it wasn't for me. Um, I, I, I wish I'd stayed at home and not come. Um, obviously people are going to think maybe next week I'll do it next week I'll put it off, I'll do it next week but once the people are there um, everyone's friendly, there's no expectations or nothing like that so I think if anyone's sort of flirting with the idea of coming training or Thursday night training when it's all back back up and running obviously um, there's nothing to lose just give it a go, even if you're five minutes in and you don't really feel it, you can leave, no one's going to judge you or say anything it's, it's that simple, that's what we're there for, it's not like Andy said, it's not a, a team of um, you, you, it's not your usual Sunday league team where everyone's giving banter and sometimes it oversteps the mark. It's not like that. I mean, you still have fun, but yeah. Sorry, you got anything else to add? Yeah, no, I, I reiterate what you're saying, Dan. I, I think it's really, really good. I I enjoy being part of it. And I've, I've also, like, I do the coaching bit and I've also played in the games as well a little bit. Yeah, I've played football for 30 odd years, mate, and I, I, I probably enjoy it more now in their mates' games than I do. Like I still play vets football, still play Sunday morning football till a couple of years ago. So, like you say, with the camaraderie of a Sunday morning, sometimes it can be necessarily intimidating, but you don't really want to be in that environment, maybe, for some reason or what. But the mates thing is very, very good. Like, really, really no, I do. I really, I really enjoy it, really enjoy it. And I say the... the I don't know anyone that's kind of come along and has made, and nobody's made to feel uncomfortable or anything. I don't know anyone that's had any issues. I think everyone who has come along, the good thing is that the people who have come along have come along again and again. And the people that have, that have kind of started are still, are still there and still around. And like I say, it's nice to see new faces and the games that we have played, some of the games we've had 25, 30 odd people that wanted to play. Yeah. Obviously, we have to reduce that down to sort of 15, 16 players because of kits and all that sort of stuff. But where you try and accommodate everyone, but yeah, everyone. I, I, I haven't known anyone to not to play and to not come back, which from our point of view, I think is is good. And like I say, there's just no pressure. That's the best thing about it is there's no yeah. pressure. Uh, I think that I think that's the biggest part of it is there's no expectation, there's no pressure, there's no you know. Like you can go on, and if if you, it's just not your week, you can come back off again. You know, it's just there's no expectation. It's like Dan Dan said, it's not it's not like Sunday League where you put yourself under immense pressure that you've got to have the best game in the world, and you know you can't do it one one missed time pass or anything like that. You you haven't got that. You can just come along and enjoy the football. You know, and it's competitive. Don't get me wrong, the games are still competitive, and 
you know, um, they, they're still played in, in, in that that manner. But it's just a friendly environment. Just, you know, I, I think we've been really, really lucky. The guys and girls that we've had come across have been brilliant. They've been really yeah. excellent. Um, you know, they've been a pleasure to coach um, every week. Um, I sort of take take time out to, to go and do the coaching. And it, it's it's not a chore at all. I really enjoy it. it. You know, I look forward to the training sessions. Um, I look forward to the matches, um, as does Simon and as does Danny and, and Dave as well. Because they're just a, a good, good group of guys and girls. And it's just just nice to, you know, catch up with them and see how their week's been. And, and, and also, parts, you know. um, sorry I disappeared. My computer decided, decided to turn off and do a Microsoft um, update in the middle of all of it <laughs> with no warning whatsoever. So that's nice. Um, anyway, yeah, so uh, that's the thing I get. You know, um, it is people just having a laugh. Um, but actually, what we're getting from that, we, we didn't want commitment, but we've actually got better commitment than we would have expected. Well, no, sorry, we've got better commitment, or we've got commitment that we would like for, like, a league team. Because people yeah. are enjoying it, and because that pressure's not there, they're actually committing more, and That's you know, trying to get involved with the club, trying to help all of them <laughs> get in contact with me about, oh, can I do this? Do you need a hand with this? Um, yeah, it's just been it's such a breath of fresh air, and as you say, with coaching, I think that's another thing as well because the, people don't have to be there; they're choosing to be there, and there's always that with work with uh, a league team or anything like that there's always going to be a week or so we're like oh you know got to get up and go and do it and if you turn up for training and that's your mindset at the time you're not going to enjoy it as much we don't have that pressure and people are there on the days that they want to be there and i think that really shines through um, just a shout out to anyone that's watching Sorry, uh, in a minute, we're going to be talking about um, funny things or memorable things that have happened on a football pitch or off the pitch or to do with football, whatever. If you've got any funny stories, just uh, type it underneath. I can see um, any comments that get put under there and we'll uh, we'll read them out um, in theory, depending on what they are. Um, yeah, so we're, we're a bit different. Um, that's our angle. It works really well. It's worked really well. And we'll continue doing that, obviously. Um, but we've had to stop and start quite a lot because of lockdown and any other teams exactly the same. But we're really making use of this time. Um, the poor boys here, I've got them booked in for like a thousand Zoom meetings between... Uh, um, they, they prefer it when the football's on and they can run away from me. But... Um, yeah, we've got loads of plans coming up. And the the break we had in the first lockdown gave us time to fine-tune and plan, and that's paid off brilliantly. It's worked really well. We came back for as, much, as long as we could, and we went away again in the November lockdown, came back better again, or the October lock, lock, lockdown. We came back fine-tuned again. Um, and we're going to be ready to face this whole season um just a bit of heads up covid wise realistically people of our age um i think we're doing justice to ourselves there danny um people of our age here initially the vaccine when they were talking about vaccine rollout and when things are going to go back to normal it estimated that on how many vaccines they've got how long it's going to take and our age group we were looking at about september if you've got no underlying issues um however that's before the other two vaccines came, vaccines came online and they're absolutely smashing it through that today boots and all the pharmacies are going to start well not all the pharmacies but boots pharmacies are starting to do them as well as doctor surgeries um so they're really ramping everything up and you've seen like they're looking into doing 24 hours and what they're saying is that it's not going to be you've got an appointment at three in the morning it's if you're working as a doctor or a nurse at night and you want to go and get vaccinated, you can book in at that sort of time, is what they're looking at. But what that sort of means is that actually when we come back this time, fingers crossed, we should be in the best position to have quite a long run of it, hopefully, of playing. 
Um, also, you know, if we've got people being vaccinated and then everyone that's had it, you know, this mm. horrific number of people that have had it, but the latest thing out today is that you've got 85% protect, protection for five months, they reckon, um, when you've had it. So that tied in with uh, the vaccine should give us quite a good long run of not spreading stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think when we're back, we're going to be back for a good time. So uh, not too long to go. Right. Any other business? No. Um, right. So I don't have much experience on the pitch because I'm rubbish. Um, but I might play on that five-a-side thing we are talking about earlier. Um, um, but, uh, boys, you lot have had so much experience in local football, um, obviously not any higher than that, um, and also for certain local teams that you've supported where there's prawns under the pitch or something, you said? Andy, um, so what memorable, what are the most weird, memorable things that have happened to you on the pitch? Because obviously the enjoyment of playing football <laughs> is brilliant. The enjoyment of scoring is brilliant. All of that sort of stuff and taking part. But it's just all the weird stuff that makes you laugh and funny stuff. But it's just another level. Oh, yeah, I think there's been quite a few, especially comedy moments when I've been in goal. Definitely. Probably Were they supposed for, to be? For my teammates, but, um, I, but yeah, I think I think one of my earliest one of my earliest funny funny memories that sticks in my head is um we used to, I used to have a, a great PE teacher, um Paul Heffer, and all all the West Ham fans out there um will know who he is. He's uh I think he's actually still a youth coach at West Ham, but he was my PE teacher and he played for West Ham in the seventies. And um, he was great. I really, I really loved loved him. And we used to do football quite a lot in the PE lessons. And uh, I really, really enjoyed it. But um, I used to be quite competitive. And uh, one year, he actually put in my school report. Uh, uh, Andrew really loves his football, and he's come on. He's come on um, really well this year. But he must learn that the referee's decision is final. Well, as a which kid, I thought was quite. How yeah, as a kid, yeah. Uh, I was senior school, so I was about 12. But, uh, yeah, he, he put in there, he must learn the referee's decision is final. And I've still got that little report book, and uh, it just makes me laugh every time I read it. The thing is, they report stitches. The report What's books, that, sorry? They, they sort of, like, they're nothing like real life. Like, I remember we done athletics at school, and uh, we only done, like... One week we'd do discus, one week we'd do javelin or whatever. And I used to walk past underneath the stairs as you um, go out to the, the school field. Uh, Danny, you might remember. Well, sorry, you might as well. But you know, like the sports hall next to the swimming pool? Yeah. And if you walked yeah. out the back door towards the squash club, right? Yeah, and you yeah. walk out there. Um, there used to be, uh, oh, I forgot what they're called, hurdles. And they were stored under the stairs to the changing room. And every time I went out that door, I thought, I, if they ever bring those out, I'm just going to, I'm going to run away. Like, I can't do a hurdle. I can barely walk. Um, but yeah, in my, I found one of my school reports and it just said, it was Mr. Webster, I think, um, had written it. And he just wrote, oh. David excels at shot put. But I don't think I've ever even touched a shot put. <laughs> um, I look like a Russian shot putter. I'll give you that. <laughs> But I don't. <laughs> I think you might have just presumed I excel yeah. at shot put. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it's like, well, it's nice to excel at something, even if it's a lie. Um, <laughs> so, are you got any uh, weird things happen to you? I imagine oh, a lot of weird stuff's happened to you. I've got a lot of stuff, but all, one that always sticks in my memory, and it's a shame Piers is not on it. We was um, we played football when when we played for Gallywood. We played for Gallywood for years together, anyway. Nath and uh, I think uh, John John Dare was our manager at the time, and um, like we, we'd all been out the night before, and we was absolutely stinking rough, still a bit drunk or whatever playing. Anyway, it got to half time. We was losing. I think we was losing like three or four nil, and um, we was getting an absolute bollocking off of John Dare, like off of our football manager at the time. And I let one, like a silent fart off, right inside the changing room. 
and he was going ballistic, like, re and then he all of a sudden he was like, "Oh my God, who on earth, who on earth has done that?" And made him gag, and he threw us all out the changing room. <laughs> I just, the, the, honestly, the you are Piers, Piers was there, and it was just like I just let this little bomb go off while he was moaning and shouting and it obviously he got wind of it and whiffed of it and was just like pardon the oh pun. my god oh my god <laughs> and uh yeah i've been called out the changing room but that's a that that was just one of my funny ones i've got loads of it's, it. it's a natural thing to you like yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong it is to all of us but i stand there at the side of the pitch and i sort of just smell something and i just glance over and you're like looking over your shoulder like <laughs> We've known well, each other 40, probably, well, probably about 38 years. Yeah. That expression has not changed, and nor has the humour. Nothing's changed between us. It's brilliant, and it never should. Um, the, when the, well, when the day that a fart is not funny is, um, yeah. I think that. I think the day I don't find that funny. Although I did get once told off at Blue Water. I did one, and um, this woman went, do you mind? <laughs> no. No, I don't. And then I scared a kid once. This is nothing to do with football, but I scared a kid. I ruined his holiday. Um, we went to Magaluf, not me and the kid. We went to Magaluf and um, we were there for two weeks and we were so rough. I learned to play a piano one night um, and then that's all I remember. And I woke up and we were on the, uh, the cleaner. So it was almost like she knocked the door down with her cleaning trolley because she couldn't get in for like a week or so. Um because we were nocturnal, so we was coming in in the morning and going to sleep all day, having a lasagna and going back out at five. And, um, yeah, and uh, this one day she threw us out on the balcony and it was like the big Spanish hotel and it's like a semicircle sort of shape, about 20 floors or whatever. Sat on this plastic balcony furniture and I was just sitting there like, oh, my God, like she's woken us up. We didn't know how we got home or anything. We're sitting there. And then I'd done this massive fart. And next to me, the wall was like about this high. And then it had that reinforced glass that you had at school indoors. You know, it's got like the wire in it, like the square wire. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't see through it, but you could see people on the other side. And everyone's sitting out on their balcony <laughs> waiting to go to dinner. And I'd done this enormous fart and it, it ricocheted around this semicircular complex, right? But it's, it's like a, a Mexican wave around the complex. And then I couldn't breathe for laughing. I just put my hand in my mouth like this. And um, yeah, to stop myself laughing. And then this little kid next door just went, Daddy, was that thunder? You said it wouldn't do that here. <laughs> and I was on the floor, almost hyperventilating, crying. Because I was just like, oh, poor little kid. Yeah, daddy is that thunder. Um, but no, anyway, on that subject of staying in bed all week and not like washing, someone here's got a similar story, haven't they? I was wondering who that was, but um, are we? am I actually telling that story now? Um, I don't think it would hurt, would it? Because I think we've all changed a little bit. Like, I remember I'm nothing to do with sport in the real world. And uh, I wouldn't, you know, uh, two years ago, I wouldn't have even owned, a, like, a pair of tracksuit legs. I don't mean that in a snobby way. I just, my lifestyle doesn't involve a pair. Of, it, it was it was uh, black winkle pickers. And uh, we'll call them skin tight jeans. They were just jeans and I'm fat. Um, but... Um, yeah, uh, and I remember a, a Facebook post come up the other day, and it's like, oh, my God, all-time low. I just went to Tesco's in a pair of tracksuit legs, right? And for me, <laughs> that's a big thing. I can't imagine. Well, I, that's a lie. I've had to put a suit on a couple of times in the lockdown. But putting a, I ain't put shoes on because I'm only on Zoom, but um, wearing actual shoes, and I think we've all definitely changed during this lockdown, and things are a lot calmer such as our hairstyles and things like that. And Danny brought something up this week. <laughs> Go for it. Um, Which I think we're yeah. all guilty of. Well, not guilty. I'm used, to, I'm used to working on the road and being all suited up and everything. Um, and this last since March last year, it's been a complete culture shock to me. I haven't had my hair cut since February last year. Um, it's normally and... got a short French, um, normally like a short French crop. He looks a bit like Ellen. 
<laughs> Apparently, it really has it. She copied me. Yeah. You dance um, like her, don't you? I do dance like her. <laughs> I was hoping for the similar taste in women gag again, but here we go. Um, yeah, so a bit slobby. Obviously, there's no school. There's no... Um, I'm not having to go out. And you left school 20 years ago. I left school. <laughs> yeah, I miss it. That's crazy. <laughs> Still keep bringing it up. Um, so, yeah, it's probably the same as everyone, but I haven't had any reason to go out or anything um, that much. So I went out for a run Friday night, come back, had a bath, um, and then did what I needed to do over the weekend. I think I went for a walk, long walk with my dad. Uh, and then Sunday night, I put on sort of just those, like, cut off jogging bottoms uh, shorts oh, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever they're called and um i slept i sleep in them so i slept in them and then monday i got work but you're not got no, no, just, i just crawl into one leg <laughs> if, it gets, if it gets really cold i just fold the other leg over to warm That's me up cute. i wonder what it's, you can't really get it from this video but danny's the size of a field mouse <laughs> A tall field, man. This isn't a sofa. I'm sitting on the um, carpet of a toilet roll. (laughs) (laughs) Croc monsieur. Um, Yeah, so uh, I put these shorts on, slept in them, Monday down down to the uh, kitchen table for work, still wearing the same shorts. Monday night, went to bed, didn't didn't really think anything of it. And then I suddenly thought, I did a bonfire last night and I stank of smoke. I thought, I better have a wash. So I run a bath and I'm sitting there thinking and I suddenly thought, I actually haven't washed, like even the armpit wash, nothing. I haven't even sprayed deodorant <laughs> since Friday before. So what was that? Five days? <laughs> Seven, six days? And then um, and, the, dreadlocks. and the shorts practically climbed off me and walked to the washing bin because I hadn't. I've been wearing them. Off and and threw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was my. I've got a similar. I've got I've this one now. Not necessarily with clothes, but I, I don't think I would. And this probably sounds really disgusting, but I'm not disgusted. I'm quite a bit of a clean kind of freak. But I think it started. I started working from home. I think it was the end of March, and I don't think it was until about May, June, July, June time that I realised that I was only cleaning my teeth once a day, <laughs> and that was before bed. Well, that's not bad. I thought you was going to say. It was only till March. It was it was in June that you chat. You washed your work trousers, like your high vis. <laughs> I, I mentioned it on a Zoom on a work call, and I was like, a, a, like one a, like a, a team call with my team, and they was all like, "Oh, that's disgusting. That's the first thing I do is clean my teeth." And I was like, "I do obviously clean my teeth. Normally, you get up for work, you get you put your shirt and tie on, you clean your teeth, whatever you go out to work, don't you? But we're working at home. I've got up, yeah, and I'm still now only clean my teeth." Eat probably once a day, and it's probably quite bad. I don't know. Is that well, at least you get dressed. You know what more do they want? Well, I don't really get. I just get out of bed and put. I will normally put a mate's tracksuit on or a football fitness tracksuit, and that's all I've been wearing for ten months. I like it when you wear weird things. Like I've got quite I a lot li- of weird li- things, li- yeah. and uh, I'll put stuff on. I've got like a black t- a black t shirt, and in neon pink, it just says "Busy Mum" on it, right? And I'll just put a pair of tracksuit legs on and busy mum. And then I'll go to the car or pop down Tesco's or something. And once you put it on, you sort of don't think about what you're wearing anymore, do you? And then oh. you get out and you're like, oh, no, I'm walking around Tesco with busy mum written on me. Um, or on like a picture of Doc Cotton. Or I've, I've got so many Jay McDonald shirts. I threw it. I um, sorted my clothes out the other day. And uh, I found I've got three Jay McDonald T-shirts, like just with little faces of Jay McDonald on. Um, yeah, that's nice. This. You got to stop. That's why she's on that's ten. Two weeks running. You mentioned Jay McDonald. How well, she not? Yeah. She's got in twice into a football podcast. Yeah. Well, she's a lad. I sent her I a know, photo. Getting, I sent her a photo of me more... cuddling a cushion with her face on, and just went, she's "I more love you." Time than Pierce's goal. Did you get a reply? No, she doesn't love me. It turns out, um, I might get her to sing if we ever like have a final or anything. Um, but we're not in a league, so we can't. Um, but um, I'll get her to sing at the end. That'll Talking of Pierce, can I just throw in another Pierce story? Yes, I've got I've got two actually about football. But um, I've got I've got football stories for days. But um, the Pierce one, I remember I was playing. I can't remember who I was playing for, but we were playing against Gallywood, and I was hanging out my backside. It was a Sunday morning, and um, I, I don't recall anything about the game. 
apart from one thing. It must have been about 65th, 70th minute. And me and Pierce were in the middle of the pitch. Um, he's probably running it. Um, something happened. Someone went to shoot or hit a long ball or whatever. And it, it caught him prime right on the end of oh, little God. Pierce or big Pierce. And um, he was on the floor. <laughs> he was on the floor for about 10 minutes. Greeny, I don't know if you were playing in this game. It was over um, about a wreck, it was. I think I do remember uh, it, Dan. I yeah, remember. and he was almost crying. It was, And it instantly sobered me up. And uh, I played right after that. made you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. He's pain. Now, you know, I said you were sitting in a ham sandwich. Yeah. You've moved your shoulders slightly. And your cushions do look like slices of bread. From That's the lettuce. We've got a bit of lettuce still. No, no, the actual it's back. Not... Oh, that is a bit of lettuce, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a cigar At the end, box. you're just going to fold it's it over and sleep in a massive sandwich. Someone just threw down a Wito. I might have that for breakfast tomorrow. Oh, what an exciting. I might use it as a rubber ring. Right, you mentioned uh, going to school, but you're an adult now. And <laughs> um, so all three of you are have got kids at home at the moment, haven't you? Yes. So how's that going? They're in bed. It's quality. All it's day. Not them oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just sedate them. And the, the no, reason I say that is because, you know, this podcast, um, we're, these ones, um, until we actually come back to football, as you can see, they're just a bit of, we just want to put our face out there for people that play for us and just keep the, uh, it sounds like a pun. Keep the ball rolling, really, and just oh, get yeah. uh, you know, so right, you know right, that we're still right. here. If you want to talk to us about anything, or if you don't want to talk to us, um, at least you get to see our personalities and avoid us. But um, I just thought it's a good way of like keep, keeping in touch. Once we come back, we've got proper format sorted. We'll have um, local footballers, national, uh, famous footballers on here chatting about their careers, ch chatting about their stories in mental health and things like that and their experiences. But in the meantime, it's just us. So, which I like because it's informal and it's just a way of getting to know us and getting to, you know, we'd love to see you and love to see you playing for us. But um, one of the things that you get all the time is men are notorious for it and it's just not talking to each other. Simple as that. Not talking about how you're feeling, not talking about... Um, anything you know we we carry a lot of stuff that we don't actually speak to people about and your football community is a great opportunity to talk to each other because there might be things that you don't want to talk to your family about there might be things that you don't want to talk to your best friend about or your your normal group of friends we've got a whole new community here uh, of friends through football um that actually there might be someone that you're more comfortable to talk to and something that's really affected uh, through lockdown is loneliness. That's a massive issue, but also the homeschooling thing. And with people I work for and work with, um, one of the biggest things as a manager that I've had a lot of trouble um, trying to make better is how on earth are you supposed to work from home, have your kid at home anyway, but also homeschool that kid? Yeah. Now that's massive. Uh, we, we're changing people's, we're letting people say, look, just let us know what's good for you. Let us know if you want to work weekends because your wife's home or your husband's home at the weekend and you can get on with your work at the weekend. If you want to change a contract while we're in um, lockdown, lockdown, if you want to do, you can't do your contracted hours, we'll do that. We'll change, we'll work with you. And do whatever we can but women are really good with talking to each other and that's one of the reasons why like the suicide rate for women is so much it's like uh, two-thirds lower than it is for men and that isn't being sarcastic and just saying it's because they talk but it actually you know they talk they get things off their chest they talk to each other men don't now we've got three dads here um who we're going to have a lot of people watching who are in very exactly the same situation as yourself. And they might be supporting their wife or they might be split up from their wife and having to do this homeschooling. And very often men feel like they're the ones that should be in control, 
should know how to do everything should be supporting the wife should be supporting the family all that sort of thing and you know that's all stereotypes but i know that's how people feel a lot of the time still so for free men here who have just been thrown into the homeschooling sort of world or not homeschooling how have you found the last week yeah i think it's um i think you touched on it really i think it's just um it's just hard work like spinning all the plates like um it's it, like like i think we talked about it last week but i've got um i've got a 10 year old and a and a 6 year old and the 10 year old's pretty self sufficient like if i set her up in the morning she sort of plods through what she's got to do and i'm quite lucky in in the in the fact that she is quite diligent she enjoys it so she she does get on um but with the 6 year old although she's really like she enjoys doing her work and everything she still needs that bit of help so it's just sort of constant and and like you're trying to work and you're trying to you know be as efficient as possible but also um to keep stopping and and stuff like that and uh i mean i've got a i've got a puppy as well he's six months and he's just sort of <clears throat> yeah so it just makes it it's just that added thing it's like um you know, like I'm, I'm making sure he's not doing something he shouldn't be doing, and then I'm trying to homeschool and I'm trying to work at the same time, um, and it's, it is it is pretty full on, and it's like uh, you end up you end up either you know like like Dan said when they go to bed is is putting your computer back on and finishing off some bits, um, sort of working out out of hours, and it just feels like uh, for me personally, um, you know. I, I'm I'm quite lucky. I, we have got support of um, Nick's mum is in our sort of support bubble for the childcare, and so she does relieve a bit of it sometimes. But I just feel like um, at the minute I just don't get any sort of time for myself because normally I would have that release of going to football training on a Thursday night, and it'd be a bit of time for me. And uh, I do think that. You know, I'm not sort of getting that. I mean, the, the the only bit of sort of time that I get is taking the dog, the, the puppy out for a walk. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and, the thing. So just about in. Um, like I'm a key worker. And at the moment, it isn't, you know, it isn't just key workers. It's if you can work, you can work. You know, if you can work from home, you can work from home. And if you can't, you can still work. But um, this has been one of the busiest you know you're thinking we're sitting at home but this has been one of the busiest years i've ever had to deal with work-wise um it's one of the busiest years i've had to deal with full stop you know no holiday well not the holidays i normally have or anything like that and uh i think it's sort of because we're at home we don't acknowledge it as much how busy we are um and how we don't necessarily go and take those breaks and how we don't necessarily get up and go for a walk and get away from the house because we're there. We just get on with it. Everything blends into one and times go out the window, um, like with the homeschooling and that. And a big thing with the homeschooling is you're not there to do the same hours that the teachers were doing with the kids. It, it's, and I think we touched on it last week about incorporating just any sort of education into the kids lives you know when you go for a walk do that thing of how many different types of trees can you see how many tell them about rivers if you're walking near a river and just make everything into a bit of education um get them to do your paperwork get them to do your get them to do your spreadsheets for you um train them up put them up a chimney now whatever but it's everything it's cooking you know doing i know that's not um necessarily part of what they're supposed to be doing but it's all educating them isn't it and just getting them involved in day-to-day -day stuff no one unless you're a qualified teacher is a qualified teacher every and think of how many people in the country are parents that aren't teachers so i think there's that pressure you put on yourself that okay i've got to do my work but I, it's really important that i do this for the kid but you can't put that pressure on yourself because you, you, you're not a teacher. You can't put that level of stress on yourself or the level of expectation. It's just, 
if you manage to do anything, you've managed to do something. And we touched on it last week about, you know, the mums at the school who um, a week after birth are back in their white jeans and, and their babies uh, eating pork chops at two months old and, oh, yeah, he can speak, he can do everything. And then it just makes you feel worse as a parent because their life isn't real necessarily. They're not reflecting this incredible life that they're giving isn't necessarily what is real and how you're feeling and what you're struggling with to educate the kid and all this, that's real. That's what the most of the percentage of the country will be experiencing, but they're not talking about it because they're embarrassed. Maybe. I think you've got to remember though, yeah, like you say that we ain't, we're not teachers, and I think there's a lot of pressure, or, or yeah. men think there's a lot of pressure that you have to be <clears throat> your nine to your nine till three o'clock. They've got to be doing this. You've got to be doing that. At the end of the day, you can only do what you can do. Don't put pressure on yourself. I certainly, I'm, I'm working from home. I'm on calls a lot of the day, Zoom calls, Microsoft Team calls, and all that. And I, I, I do what I can with the kids. At the end of the day, if I can't help them, and there's points, I just say to them, look, sit down, put a t, put the TV on go in the garden, have a play, and when I can give you a hand, I will do. You just can't put the pressure on yourself at the end of the day. No, and, no and that's the thing. It's, it's a, a couple of hours. <coughs> you know, uh, there isn't a golden rule to it, but you're certainly not expected to be educating them the same hours that a school's educating them. Um, it's not possible. You, you know, it, it's It's just the best that you can, and that best might be one day you don't do anything with them it might it, but it's real there's nothing else you can do the whole country is in the same situation it's not just yourselves um that aren't qualified teachers trying to look after a kid and do your job there's lots of pe in my household that goes on but then we had that at school didn't we i don't know if you was in my class at the time but mr major in uh year four which is modern day year six um because he was the sports teacher at the school, wasn't he? We done yeah. PE every day. Um, but uh, yeah, everything is education. The garden, you know, the weather's rubbish now. But when we had the summer lockdown, getting out, teaching them how to plant plants, how to grow seeds, how to make banana bread, how to do all that sort of stuff. Um, there's so much in the house that you can do that is stuff that you do know that you can tell them and teach them. I think, I think you that, probably wouldn't I, get the opportunity to otherwise. I think that's a bit that does make it that little bit harder. This lockdown is the weather and that. Like in the in the summer, it was it was so much nicer, wasn't it? Because you could be out in the garden and you could sort of just be working out in the garden um, and just you just feel better in the summer, don't you? Anyway, yeah, you definitely. Know, just you know, so I think there's that as well. And not just and, that, but in the summer, you've got you've got you have your day working from home, even if you're homeschooling, but then you've got about three or four hours, maybe longer to, to go out, yeah. do a, have a walk, walk the dog. Day um, yeah. yeah. Just, or go for a bike ride or anything. Whereas now it's dark before you finish work. Really good point. So you, that. Yeah. And you don't get, um, like, like was touched on last week about me running and stuff. I don't run as much. I'm injured anyway, but I don't run as much. And I, one of the factors is it's dark. And I just think I can't bother to go in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, yeah, well, it, I, I said to the girls the other day, oh, as soon as I finish work, we'll we'll head over to the park. And then I was like, oh, I don't know why I've said, said that, because it was pitch black. Yeah. And I was like, take the uh, torches, girls. Like, are, we, are we going to the park now? And I was like, oh, that's when I say so that's when I go for a walk now. Um, I prowl in the dark. But because um, first thing in the morning, I want to get up early and go for a walk early normally. But I don't generally have time to do that i want to be on the computer by seven i want to make sure i'm dealing with getting all my team sorted for work and blah 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 get all that sorted then i'm stuck in it i did have a run where i i blocked out on my lunchtime so i'd get up and go out at lunchtime and i need to do that again i only done it up to christmas so i need to do that again um but then i finish work i do stuff like zooms with us and things like that and like last night, I went for a walk at half nine 
we had a meet yeah um i had a meeting last night finished at half nine i went for a walk after that for like an hour and a half pitch black with a torch um didn't see anything <laughs> um, and at the moment i'm just waiting for the river to burst outside uh, it's well high but yeah so you've got a long time ahead of you with this homeschooling didn't you and i think it's really important that you really sort of establish at the beginning that you drop that standard that you may have put in maybe because you just need to do what you can and that's as much as it, that's as much as it can be yeah i agree i think i think it is like so i said and we well, said last week, in london this week can't you just don't put that just don't put that pressure on yourself yeah i mean I, I went up to london a couple of days this week um for work and it was just weird it was just weird like the tra the train was the train was completely empty like you know and then i got into got into london and went on to the i had to go onto the tube and the tube was just you know, like nowhere near as packed as it normally is, but I just couldn't really get my head around it. Like people were just sitting on their chairs as normal, like not leaving a space between and stuff like that. And and then quite a few people like wearing their masks under their nose. And like one lady actually said to one guy, because he was uh, talking to his mate and then he kept coughing in between and she went, can you pull your mask up? Because he had it like under his nose. And it was just like, you might as well not have it on if you're not going to wear it properly. You know, it's but, you know, this is 10 months, it. 10 months yeah. into this. Yeah. I know we didn't have masks right from the beginning, but it's 10 months and people are still just failing at the basics of. Yeah. That. Like some, some people are getting on and sitting like between two seats. So people couldn't physically sit next to them. But I was like, it's shocking that you've got to do that to, you know, like to not sit next to somebody. I was seeing that. The, the thing that gets pulled up all the time is like about planes, but I went um, in July. Yeah, July, I went to Greece. And I had not let my parents, who were shielding um, until then, but I'd not let them go to a supermarket because you go in a supermarket, you've still got people leaning across you and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, in a control freak way, if I plan the journey to the airport, plan walking through the airport all the airlines put out videos about the um hepa filters that the so the same hospital grade filters that you have in hospitals and things like that hepa grade filters on the plane that recycle uh, sorry no not recycle uh re replenish what's the word replace um all of the air within the cabin of a plane every three minutes right so all that air has changed every time when we got on, we went with whiz i already had antibacterial wipes to wipe the seat the handles uh, you know the the arms and the tray but when we got on the plane they gave us antibacterial wipes to do that anyway so you're wearing masks on there as well weren't eating weren't anything like that so and i was sitting with my family no one else with me but that the air's been uh, being taken out and replaced. You've got antibacterial stuff around you. You've got antibacterial gel for your hands. That's very different to sitting on a train next to someone or a bus. But you're still seeing, like, buses. People, you're still seeing people yeah. sitting at bus stops next to each other that aren't, you know, necessarily with, with, with the family. And... You just think, why have you been sitting in an office all day away from other people, like spaced away from other people, and then you walk out and you still sit next to someone at a bus stop? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, what do you not understand? And then this week with uh, Premiership Football, they had a bit of a, a, a re-thing about, what was the game two days ago? There was a game... It was there was a, the Aston Villa game they because they shut their training, didn't they? There was one they were showing uh, on telly uh, on the news, and they were saying like they had words before about not doing goal celebrations with each other, and that's the FA. You know, the FA we've had those FA rules since the return to football in June for us, 
And it is, you know, no spitting, no goal celebrations, none of that. But our premiership players are still doing it. Um, and they're still, you know, hugging each other and stuff like that. And that's not, you know, how can you put it? Yes, they're getting tested all the time. A lot of them in bubbles and things like that. But it don't really spread the word very well, does it? No, I think, you know, like we, we touched on it last week, I think, but it's, I think it's really tough, isn't it? Like, um, because, you know, like, I think it might have been Arteta or something was saying, you know, is it more like, is it morally right that we're still playing football when everybody else is on lockdown? Like, why should we be exempt from it? But then from a, you know, what, you know, if you're a single, a single guy and it just gives you something to definitely it's entertainment. To. You know, it's entertainment and it is something to look forward to. So from that, um, you know, respect that, you know, it is it is good. And I suppose from from their side of it, they are sort of risking, uh, you know, putting themselves into that situation for that. You know, even and if you take it from a footballer's side, they're sort of risking their their health, their family's health for that entertainment of of the of the public watching it and stuff. So, what do you think about, um, with that in mind, with our normal day jobs, I wouldn't imagine we've ever had the option to say, because I was just thinking, if you was in one of those premiership teams and you were told it's business as normal, with restrict, you know, there's things in place, would you be comfortable with that? But then I thought, well, actually, our day jobs we get told that we're still working. We get told what's been put in place to make us safe at work. And we get told what those new rules are at work. But we don't get the option of, oh, do you still want to come to work or do you not feel safe? So actually, for the for the players, maybe it's the same, it's the same sort of thought mentality, you know, the mentality there. Because I'm yeah. thinking, like, what if you didn't want to play and you're in a club like that? Do you get a choice? That's a very good point, though, actually. That's a very good point, because from my work, we, 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 we can go out if we want to. We only go out to sites if it's health and safety or business critical. Now, but we have an option. If we don't want to go, we don't have to go. But if you want to go, we've got key work yeah. left. If you want to go, you can, as long as it's under business critical and it's authorised by your line manager. Um, so we have that option. And that's where I've never... But then really if you're in a contract that. with, um, you know... If you play for Spurs and they want you out on that pitch because your contract is that you play and they need you. They need they need all the help, yeah. I've never really thought of it that way, Dave, actually. No, I haven't either. Even though they're yeah. elite elite sportsmen, they've still got their They're still they're still putting their families at risk, aren't they? Yeah, Every time. You know? And and that's the that's the thing, because they get a lot of stick, you know, they get a lot of you know, it's quite an easy target, isn't it? You know, we all know how much they get and, you know, some people think it's unfair and blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately, that's just how it is. And it's not their if fault you, either. If you, if you were a player and somebody said, oh, uh, we can we can pay you, you know, £150,000 a week, but um, or we could, we could pay you uh, £1,000 a week and it'd look better, like, what would you do? Like, you, you're not going to... You know, well, it's, it's, just, it's just how it is, isn't it? It's, it's a short the career, any job. and that's just that. That's just the money, unfortunately, that is in football, especially Premiership football now. But and I don't think you can hold it against those guys because, you know, again, they get a lot of stick, but a lot of them do some really good stuff. You you only got to look at Marcus Rashford and what he's done, you know, for getting meals to the kids and that that sort of stuff. He he actually changed the government's decision on it. Hmm. You know. You know, so they, they do get a, a bad rap, I think. And then, but playing devil's advocate with that, right? You know, when it's like, oh, that they get all that money, they should give that to charity. Why should they? It's not their fault that they earn that money, yeah. I know, I know they they negotiate in uh, with agents in contract talks and that, but it's not if that money's up for grabs, like us in our work. If one of our colleagues is getting 50 grand and you're only getting 40 grand, then. <laughs> You, and you're doing the same job. You're going to try and negotiate the same wage. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault they get that money. The money's no. in it because of sport. But, but and I think, go on. 
I was going to say, so that example there of another colleague getting uh, different money but doing the same job. If we look at it the other way around of we are in a position that earns this much money, but the director is in a position that earns this much money, yeah? It's a different role. He earns that much money. I earn this much money. Yeah. We earn this much money, and those footballers that are in a different role to us earn that much money. Yeah. It's the same thought. I'd say it's the same sort of thing. We're not doing that job. We're not. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. But if that money is in that, if that's what the going rate is it, for that job, <laughs> that's it. Then that's what they earn. And yeah. if they personally want to give, if that's too much money for them, and they want to give some away, lovely. But well, they probably do. Money. A lot of them probably do, but they don't yeah. broadcast it because they don't want yeah. it to and look like so they're much. going. Oh, look at me! I'm doing this. We hear so much of, oh, they earn all that money. So what? Does anyone have a go at Tom Daly being an Olympic diver? Oh, he gets all this money because he's uh, a famous Olympic diver. Yeah, but he's worked since he was a kid to get that. And that's the job. That's the industry he's in. He's, you know, he's lucky with that. But just because he earns that, should he give all his money away? Why? Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it's like big directors in, in big companies. You know, you look at some companies and they're taking massive bonuses while they're laying people off. You know, so yeah, footballers aren't yeah. doing that. No, you know, they're, they're not hurting anyone with what they're doing. They're well, foot, footballers as well. They're not. They're not all the same. They're not robotic. They're not all the same. So you've got. Um, obviously, I'm a Palace fan, but our captain on New Year's Eve invited one of the Fulham players around. So he got in trouble for that, and rightly so. You would think that all the Palace players would take note and stick by the rules, but then. One of our other players went to a game to watch his old team play on Saturday, which you know technically is a supporter because he doesn't play for him, and you're not allowed to do that. And he got in trouble again. And you'd think, hang on, this is the same team. The same, yeah, all right, the guy's young, but he's making a, a naive mistake. And I think it's just the same as everyday life. We've got people now who will do everything by the letter, what they're told by the government. And then you get some that, like maybe I could be in this bracket. You think you're doing everything right, but there might be the odd time where I slip up or do something wrong. That technically, or, isn't. there'll be things that you aren't doing right. You're purposely not doing them right, but you thought about it. And as far as you're concerned, and I don't mean you personally, you're not causing any harm to anyone by doing that. Doing yeah. Stage, as in, stage, if we're allowed to go out once to go and do exercise a day, yeah, you start you to go out time. three times. And you go out first thing in the morning and you go for a run. You go out at lunchtime, you still don't see anyone. You go out at night and you don't see anyone. You're yeah. not hurting anyone by doing that. But actually, you know, technically, it's not yeah. what to do. But then there's other people. I don't know if I mentioned it last week. It might have been after. But um, I went to Asda and there was a girl come in. I think I did mention it really quickly. 20-year-old girl come in. Security guard stopped her. She didn't have a mask on. He said, you're not coming in without a mask. Um, in the end, he, he gave her a disposable mask. And she walked past me about 20 seconds later with it in her hand. And then there's that kind of person, right? And what my point was is footballers are the same. You get footballers who are, yeah, are doing it because they get the money. And they're like Harry Kane, for example, I don't know if this is, he might not give a shit, but he might think, I don't like putting my family in this position, but it's my job. I earn a lot of mon money. I'm, I'm respected by all the fans. Therefore, I'm going to do it. And he might he might stick to all the rules. And then you've got, like I just mentioned, the other players who just couldn't give a shit and do their own thing. Um, it's the same as everyday life, but yeah, just it, it's a different yeah different industry. It doesn't mean all footballers don't care and they no. they're not cleaning their hands and all this. Then and that. another thing with the money is fines, right? Ten grand fine for organising a house uh, for organising a boat party in Hertfordshire at the weekend, right? Someone got a ten grand fine for that. I thought you meant this weekend coming. No, I've not told anyone about I that. Did you anyway, but yeah, but, um, yeah, ten grand fine for that. So if there was also there was a ten grand fine for a fat uh, a group of thirty people in a minibus driving to Wales for a walk. Oh my god! Right. So, but a ten grand fine. That's massive for us normal people, right? 
if you wanted to have if you're harry kane and you want to have your birthday party and you want to invite your family and you want to get them all a covid test before you go to that party and then you have that party so what if you get a 10 grand fine that's when their wealth becomes a different thing it's like saying to us if you park on double yellow lines just pull up at you know you, you'd get annoyed by parking near the station andy um just pull up in the bus lane park there yeah you're going to get a fine um but if in comparison that fine uh-huh. that 50 quid 200 250 quid whatever fine to us that's still a lot of money if that was an, an equivalent to us of a pound uh-huh. Just, I'd just park it there every day. I wouldn't care. Sorry, did somebody just fart? Um, I'd imagine it's Sai. Was it me? Oh, no, I, I think I, as I moved forward on the desk, I did this. Oh, okay. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, so, you know, to put things in perspective like that, then that's where the money that footballers earn is a little bit, could be a little bit different because actually they've got different thresholds to us with what, that the impact of that fine is to us compared to them and the consequences are a lot less for them because in comparison the money's nothing it's not the same money we've got here uh someone's just put a message out anthony joshua was reportedly paid around 40 million pound for his second fight with uh ruiz in december 19. no one really moans about that this is way more than a footballer gets, but unfortunately, footballers are e- easy targets regarding how much they earn. Yeah, same as like Justin Bieber, um, Boris he, Johnson. He's fighting Anthony Joshua, <laughs> and uh, no one knows about that yet. No, but you know, like they get a load of money. People are people. Piers has just put up there exactly. Um, just on the mask thing, Tesco's have put up. Um, went there yesterday and they've got the doors like shut so you can only get one person through at a time. Big boards there saying uh, no no entry without masks now. Like they're enforcing that. Sainsbury's have done it as yeah. well. I think but you get inside, there's no one-way system. No, but they've yeah. um, I had an email from Sainsbury saying the same thing. You have to wear a mask unless you can prove otherwise. And the other thing is you cannot go as a family or you cannot go as yeah. a couple. You have one. to go on your own. Yeah, they're try yeah, they're saying like you can only only bring children if you've got no other way yeah. of Yeah. I I'll make it right, you know, because like I mean I I I went into town before uh, before Christmas, before the lockdown, and uh I just popped in, I said to the girls, Oh, we'll go in and we'll get mum a present while she's wait working. And literally, I lasted five minutes in town before I said, no, nah, it's not safe. Like, the shops were unbelievable. Walking down Bond Street in Chelmsford was just ridiculous. We just, I literally walked past the first shop and said, no, we're going home. I'll order it online. You know, it was ridiculous. People, like, some of those small shops were, like, they were trying to stick to, like, Keeping a queue on one side, but then they weren't big enough for the amount. Of well, Santander, yeah, hard, isn't it? I had to put some money in Santander the other day, um, like to pay it in, and I had to go to the actual cash point outside it, and uh, walked across the high street, and I thought, oh, bloody hell! There's the queue in Chelmsford was out of Santander, or well, they weren't in Santander. There's queuing outside, but they queued from there, and instead of queuing like zigzagging or something like that, straight across the high street to Lloyd's. <laughs> and the staff are going up and down the queue, like talking to the people, and that you're like, you're just queuing across the entire high street. Could you not? Like, is that the most sensible thing? But yeah, anyway, um, back to football. Uh, football's great, and it's coming back soon. But um, no, we we've got so many plans coming up, and really, really so happy and so proud of everyone involved with us and everyone that's played for us during these ridiculously hard times that fingers crossed are a once in a lifetime thing. Peers, Rich, all of our coaches, what they got in place and how they've adjusted weekly to how these restrictions have changed. They've got it absolutely spot on every single time since the return of training, where it was, you know, maximum of six, including the coaches, the coaching team having such a big coaching team that we can spread out like that 
and still do these multiple groups. And we, they've had the finger on the pulse constantly. And they, the second we've been allowed to play and it's been safe to do so, we've been back every single time. And that's an absolute credit to everyone involved. And what gets me is if we can do that and if our players can do that and we've had um, a match where we've had um, uh, supporters there as well as a, as a trial, we can do that safely without it ruining the game or ruining anything. It's not hard to just wear a mask, is it? Or just stay at home. <laughs> Or, you know, we can do that. We can keep two teams safe every week through all of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's just frustrating. Like, there was a guy, like, youngish sort of city guy when I was in London. He had his long coat on and he, he looked really flash. And he's walking along. He goes down into the tube, no mask, gets his headphones out, puts his headphones in. I was like, mate, it's not your headphones you need. Like, you know, just totally, oblivious. you know, and I, I don't know, he might have had some reason that he can't wear a mask, but, you know, it's just, it just baffles me. I just think it doesn't even cross their mind. It's like, I just think it's selfish, like, you know. Now, Football Fitness Club and Mates FC, I don't know if you've got any handy, but we've uh, got snoods now as well. Um, you're just checking if you've got one on. Um, I was, yeah, I did have well, it. You might have your one, Andy. Because I was when I was working in London, I had it. It was just perfect. And that's the thing. That's what I was going to say. So moving forward, um, when we come back, we should be in a better position than where we were beforehand. But with training, we've got snoots you can get now. Um, they're like really lightweight. They're ideal for a face covering. This isn't a sales pitch. Um, they're ideal for a face covering, and you can just chuck them around your neck. And pull them up as and when you need to. Um, Danny's had that on since uh, Tuesday, the week before last. Yeah. What it is, it's a pair of shorts, but it's rotted and just that's just one leg. Oh, let si has got one as well. There you go. Lovely. Oh, that, that can be you. Uh, if, can you twist it round so the logo's at the front, the black's at the front? <laughs> what, like my owl neck. That's how, I've, uh, that's how I've designed it. Right, that little symbol should just be slightly under your left eye. Danny left eye. Exactly. Lovely. Perfect. Yeah, so we've got snoods now. Um, so, uh, oh, did you design it though? So, this is the front then. What you got on a football fitness club one? Same. No, have I not gone far enough? Is that mate, I, it's just black to me. All oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. I designed it so the mate's logo should be slightly to the left, and then you'll have the other one coming up your neck the other side. Um, the the seam the seam that goes down the back is a get, bit of a giveaway. Oh, I like the label. Ah, yeah, yeah. So the, the seam should uh, go down the back of your head. Color codes all of our players' merch, which will be out shortly. Um, yeah, but yeah, so something like this, little thing like that, that's no hassle to have around your neck, is it? We're not making people wear this or anything like that, but we've got these snoods now. They're really lightweight ones because. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, also, it can be a hat. Yeah. Um, I don't know if what I've got say, I'm allowed to say, so I won't. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're ideal just to pull up over your face as and when you want to. Um, I've been but, wearing it uh, Just wear it as a whole body stocking. That is. But, yeah, so what we're also doing, um, we're going to kick off shortly with getting fixtures back in. Um well, we've got some fixtures still in already, but we're going to go in from April, definitely. And we want to fill up every Saturday. If you want to play us, if you are a team already, if you're not a team and you want to just get a group of mates together, whatever, just let us know. If your if you're work team, you know, if you've just been stuck in work and you want to get your work slot back together and get them out, come and play us, pull a team together. If you need a kit, we'll help you out with that. You're not having one. You can just borrow one of ours. But, um, yeah, we just want to get every Saturday filled in and get people out there and give you the opportunity to play football. When it comes back, it is coming back proper. Uh, Piers has just said on the messages, Cy Green straight out of Compton. Straight out of the kiln. Straight oh, out of Piers, kiln. What, what's the, uh, what's the uh, Palace score? Nil-nil. I've got it over there. 
Neil, Neil, when does Zaha? When does Zaha sign for Arsenal? I don't think that's going to happen, mate. He's coming West Ham, mate. Uh, no, no, I think he wants to go to a big club. Uh, sorry. Funnier. <laughs> so, just one last thing from me, and that is on the subject of the homeschooling or struggling with this lockdown. We are a football team. No, we're not. I'm not. We're a football club. We are a football club, but it's all about the community, right? Message us via our Facebook page, Mates FC, or the Instagram, or Twitter, or anything like that. Message us if you want to chat. Message us if you want to get things off your chest. Message us if you're lonely. Message us for anything at all. We're all here. If you've played for us before and you're in our players lounge or one of the uh, chat groups, then use that chat group. Start each day saying hello if you're lonely. Um, we're not just here to play football. We're here for all of you. And we're here as a community and we want to make a community. And actually a lockdown like this is a great team bonding event, um, a long team bonding event. We can make whatever we need to out of this. But whatever happens, you don't have to be sitting at home alone. You don't have to be sitting at home worrying about homeschooling. The whole country is in the same situation that we're all doing in a different way, but we're a group of friends here that are all here to help each other. And it don't matter if we don't know you, we like everyone and we need as many friends as we can, please, because uh, we've grown up with each other and it's really taken its toll on us. Speak to uh, yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Andy, anything from you? Final words. Um, no, not really. I think I think that's brilliant. I just uh, I was just thinking of funny stories because we were talking about funny football stories, and uh, I remember there was one. Um, if anybody's ever played at the old Broomfield, uh, when it when it when the used to change rooms used to be up by behind the Angel Pub, and uh, it was like um, I don't know, it was just like an old kind of prefab kind of building. And uh, I remember we played a cup game against Broomfield and I was playing in goal that day. And uh, just for a laugh, all the boys were sort of getting ready in the changing room and it was about five, ten minutes before we went out. And uh, I was just mucking about and I saw that there was this little metal bit coming out of the wall. So I put my foot on it and I jumped up and there used to be like rafters in the, in the the across the changing room. And I held it with one hand and I went... Come on, boys, are we up for this? And I went like that and started doing pull-ups like that. But what the boys couldn't see, because of the way the bench was and my bag, they couldn't see that I had my foot on this metal <laughs> peg. So it looked like I was doing one-handed pull-ups, which I can't do two-handed pull-ups, but it's quite a lot of weight to lift. But I was going like that, and I went, oh, we up for this? Come on, boys, just go for it, like that. And it was really fun. And all the boys started laughing, and then one of them clocked it, and they all started laughing. But as I went like that, I looked over, and the, the wall had about a two foot gap and the away team could see me. But obviously <laughs> they could see even less and they were looking at me all horrified. Like, like we, went out one seven, we went out and won seven nil. They were just, they it's were like, I'm not, going any, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere near that goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. They were beaten before they went out. They were beaten before they went out. What they didn't know is I was had my foot on a metal pole. But yeah, it was quite. Britain's got talent. Yeah, I that's, uh, I've written that win. So, right, uh, right. Okay, anything from you, Danny? Danny? No, no. Danny. Um, yeah, just like you said. Just well, actually, yeah. Say no, and then start talking. Um, one of the things I was going to mention when Andy was talking earlier about um, coming along and just playing. If you just um, haven't played for a while, or just fancy meeting new people, and that one of the things we do do. If, in between having actual fixtures is we have enough players, like you said, to play against each other as such. So we've got a team of 11 mates playing a team of 11 mates. Um, I say mates, call it the mates team. We are mates, but it's not like everyone knows each other and you're going to be, uh, it's not clicky or anything like that. So yeah, um, maybe look on the page, see when there's fixtures. If you don't, that's, if you, that's if you, uh, sorry, just, no, I was just going to say, if you finish, just on that point, 
Joshua. I'll wait for you to talk and then I'll start talking. After you. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <laughs> if, if you feel, feel it's a bit daunting, if it's a proper fixture, just come along to one of the days where we're playing uh, another mate's 11 because it is just it, your team's picked five minutes before the game. So you, it's not like we're playing them. And you can switch that. Can switch around during the game and all that. So it's just like a training match. But another thing that Andy mentioned is it is a little bit, or Dave mentioned, it is a little bit competitive, as in it's as competitive as you want it to be, really. It's not just walking around, passing. Um, there is an element of competitiveness, but it's it's just a bit of fun and just to get everyone out and about. Go, Dave. I was just going to say, because um, I can't remember very much, but... Um... When you just said about clicky, that's actually a massive thing. If you go to join a new foot, uh, an existing established football team, there is normally such a great bond in that team that it can be really, really daunting joining that established bond. Now, for us, we do have a lot of regular players, but they don't all play in the same matches. So Let's say we've had about 50 or 60 people. I may, I may have made that up. I've got a feeling it might have been about 80. We've got about 60 people that played for us in our first 10 matches. So some of them have been repeats. Some of them have played two or three times or quite a lot. But it's a different team every single week. There's always new people. The last match we had before lockdown, we had six new people that had never played yeah. for it or knew each other. Um, so, yes, it's daunting to turn up. Um, like that but you definitely won't be the only person that has turned up like that that's what we expect that's how it is it's fine you've also got the mates of sea training just come around have a you know just come and watch if you want just come and see what's going on and and also on this podcast just ask questions you know we've yeah. got it we've got it open dave can read the questions and that if you've got anything like even if it's just what you want us to talk about on the podcast um, you know, if it's if it's a question, if it's something funny that you want to add, just please come on and, and add that because it adds to this this podcast. You know, the more interactive we can get it, the better. Exactly. We are, you know, for mates, we are your mates is our um, catchphrase, if you like. And we are your mates FC. It's, it, we listen to you. We put the direction that we go in. We put our ideas to the team. And we let them steer. Um, we want to make it work for whoever, whoever's playing for us. Right, anything from you, Sai? Um, I'd like you just to basically do a massive fart. would be great. No, no, nothing for me. I've, I've let a couple of little silent ones up. I don't know if anyone... Nice one. Any trouble with Brian Harvey recently? No, 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 no. All good. I haven't been out, Dave, so I don't really okay. know. But and uh, and you, you, Andy, you've been all right with uh, Carol Decker or whoever it was? Yeah. <laughs> Was it Carol Decker? Carol Decker. Oh, Alison Moyer. Yeah, that's <laughs> Carol Decker. Well, I've been, I've been to name, so I haven't seen, I haven't seen uh. Alison. So, but I'll tell you what, Southend are doing well. We, we're, uh, I'd like to say we're climbing up the table, but we're still bottom of the league. But we have had a couple of wins. And you're like, in the table. What more do you want? It's looking a lot more promising than it was. He's doing a great job. So, just a question we got in from a viewer. Um, have you seen any good goals recently? Uh, oh, you might know I think who the that... last good one was Pierce's. It oh, was... Who's Pierce? Oh, Pierce Lindo, honestly. Oh, the local football legend. He literally, oh, well, I can't, you can't, you've got to watch it. It's on YouTube. Is um, it actually Sans, Sans versus uh, Mates FC? Look it up. Uh, second half it was it, the aerobatics alone like without without the power of the shot something else how does this get a mention so. every week I don't understand well it's well, just one of the best goals that's ever happened it's a it's bit like it's very similar to Maradona and Pele you and know, Diana Ross at they, the uh, just, American <laughs> Diana <laughs> Ross when she done the American uh, the opening of the American World Cup and she kicked that ball. It missed the goal, and the goal exploded. Was it basically <laughs> like that? <laughs> They're just going to keep very own playing. Ross, Piers Lindo. Who is Piers supporting tonight, anyway? He's got both of his teams playing. Um, I don't know. He's not replied. Oh, Dan's on silent. Dan, you're silent. No, he's shy. Can't hear you, Dan. 
No, Piers is a, he's more of a Palace fan than he is Arsenal. Yeah. Listening. Oh, uh, this is this is new to me. I didn't realise that he had a second team. Can you hear me now? No. Yeah, yeah. You can. Is his first team. Right, we've had a request come in. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> um, I've got two things to read. Piers uh, has a message for Sai. Uh, I can't repeat it. It ends in head. Um, <laughs> and I've also got I've got a request from uh, Gemma Green, and. Uh, it's can she request that I play in the next game? So actually, with what we're doing internally, he is playing in the five side. It might happen, and I get to buy some boots then, don't I? Them new predators, how nice are they? The uh, well, predator accelerator makes. What would that about two hundred and fifty quid though? Wouldn't they? They've not said yet. They're coming out about March, but they will be about two hundred and fifty. Yeah. So they, if anyone hasn't seen in twenty. 14, I think the Adidas brought out, um, they brought out all of the Predators uh, reissued again, um, the whole range. And they were beautiful. Um, but yeah, they're bringing out. Dave's got a lovely pair of Predators and they have never kicked a ball. They That bit of rubber on the front is mint. It's... <laughs> I've asked him to kick a ball a couple of times. Yeah. We've got Are you all kids? Sorry. Right, you're. I stand with Gemma at the side of the at the match, right? And your kids kick balls at me, and I don't even look at them. I just stand there. <laughs> they, 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 you know, like if a dog jumps over like a ball or something. Uh, your, your, yours are the same, Andy. Actually, your kids, uh, especially especially Sophie, they kick the ball at me, and I don't even look down at them. I I, I know what they're trying to do. And, uh, I know what they're trying to do. All they're trying to do is make me kick a ball back at them to play. But um, yeah, I won't because I'll probably take their head off. Um, I think I tried, didn't you? Last game we had, when we had the photo in the goal, and you, you kind of, you had to walk like 50 yards across the pitch back to your spot next to Gemma, and I passed you the ball. I was like, Dave, I just ignore it. Kick? And you kind of looked at me like deaf, as if you was going to kill me. Yeah. You, you, you haven't seen nothing yet. I think we're going to un uncover a new Messi here. I've yeah, got, I'm uninjured, right? I'm uninjured. I've never been injured. Well, I've had broken ribs and stuff, but not through football. Uh, it's just this harness I used to go in. But, um, uh, but <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm un I've never had an injury uh, apart from where I walk like a pirate. Um, sometimes when I walk uphill, um, but um, yeah, so I think I'm prime and I'm uninjured and. A bit like if you've had something build up in you you for a lot of, a long time. Like I'd imagine also I don't punch people, so I imagine if I was to punch someone, I'd probably be as good as Frank Bruno or something. Yeah, but um, like it would just be forty two years of build up. So I'm thinking the same with football. I think I don't think I've got any skills, but I think I could do the world's best toe punt and kick the moon out of the sky. You've got one shot in you. Oh, yeah, and probably what I'll probably do is break one of the kids' spines or something. But I just <laughs> I'll pass back one day, and it'll be so violent that they'll just they'll just be like <laughs> those <laughs> things that you hit with a bowling ball. What's they what they call pins? Pins. Your, all four of your kids that are out playing around me, they'll just be smashed to bits like um. Oh, no. pins. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, mate. Huh? I, can you, people hear me now? Yeah, yeah I can yeah. hear you now. <laughs> what if, right? You're the world's most gifted footballer. <laughs> no, and I'll you've wasted think, these years. I think this quite a lot. I think it might happen. And we'll never know. I know. I, I, I literally he, have never. I reckon he oh, well, I did kick the ball once. Secret. I kicked the ball really good once. I sent a video, didn't I? Where I kicked it at the rail at the train station at the viaduct. And what happened? Did it come back? No, I chose on the wall where I wanted to kick it, and I kicked it at that spot. So probably messy. Did you? Yeah. That's a good, can that's I a good just thing. Say, you can, can pick where you're say, aiming, mate. That's the aim. That's it. You, you're made. Don't, it. don't, don't be fooled by any of this. Since lockdown, Dave has been in that park <laughs> practicing rainbow kicks and everything. I don't know he what that literally, means. He is going to come. I'm, I'm telling you, Maradona, the new Maradona, is here. Madonna. Either that would be more like Madonna. Yeah, but... I'll tell you what has happened to me in that park before. Um, no, this, this, no this isn't the show for that. No. <laughs> oh, God. No, um, 
years ago, um, I used to jog, right? Um, but then they stopped making bras big enough for me. Um, and uh, I used to jog and ran Chelma, and I'd run between, uh, run at that bit, but before um, you know where the outside adult gym is next to the hockey uh, pitch, yeah. and I'd run along there. And if a ball came over, I'd purposely not look because I thought I can't. I, I'd really sort of sprint along that bit and then just like be really out of breath because the the fear of a ball coming over there and me having to kick it back right <laughs> into a whole pitch of people, I can't do it. Like I can't uh, put myself under that pressure. I'd probably like it go backwards and end up over on the slide or something. But um, and I couldn't even imagine getting mud on my legs to be honest. Um, <laughs> but I don't ask it now. But, no, obviously, I, I don't, I'm not in that sort of like, no, that's snobby. I don't mean it like that. I I get mud on my legs. Why would I get mud on my legs? Like, you, you, uh, on the 3G, you're all right. You don't generally yeah. get that, Dave. Just making excuses. I just, um, air. I can't run with air. The worst thing about the 3G is picking uh, those oh, little flat bits out of yeah. Oh, you mean, you mean my entire floor that off now? My washing machine. Um, last longer than with cow gone, but, but um, you know that flap on the washing machine that you open, you're like, Oh no, oh no, I've flooded everything, and then it's just like actually a thimble of water comes out. I expected to open that and just had have a massive rubber tube come out of it, of all of the bits out of all of the socks. And that's a rule that's coming in when we get back that people are going to turn their socks the right, right way round before they put it. <laughs> in. <There's, laughs> Every single pair of socks, every single sock, right? Not, I don't mind turning it inside out, but if I get lazy and can't be bothered, and then I go to pair them up and I turn it inside the right way, and like a ton of rubber falls out of them. You're putting your nice clean hand into a sweaty. I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, God. I no, no, like, not in a good way. <laughs> I don't... No, I don't mind that. That's fine. It's just that. You used to have to order them. <laughs> It's the <laughs> no, it's just that you put your hand in and then you pull it out, and then all them bloody things go everywhere. And you're like, just turn it inside out the right way, just turn it the right way to start with. And mummy washing, um, yeah, those black bits come. It's a surprising where they go, those it is very bits. surprising where they go. I know what you mean. I literally, like, they get caught a, in week your hair, later, they? A, a week later, yeah, in my man. shower. Um, right, anyway. and everything, don't they? Everywhere, mate. Up you. Just, uh, just uh, uh, sorry, Gemma said that you walked behind you after football, you farted, and it was like going behind a gritter. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, I had a child like years and years ago. Years ago. Um, I did do this. Sorry, go on. No, go on. This is going to be horrible, isn't it? No, I was just going to say, talking of farting, I did over Chelmer Park. I, I, it was me and Ross Buck. And I can't, Chris Church, I think it was, and Ross had an old van then. And I remember that I'd just done this almighty fart once that went on for like 15, like 15, 20 seconds to the point where Buck laughed so much he tripped over and dented the side of his van, like falling into <laughs> his van. It was on, you ask Buck next time you see him, it was the, honestly the longest, loudest thing. I don't know where it came from. Kind of just, and that's the through thing. my body, just the air just come when out. Yeah. When something like that happens, right? I had a similar one. Um, and you know what you're going to do and when you're going to do it 99% of the time. But I was sitting at the bar in Greece um, with my friends. And they're a lovely old couple sitting next to me that I know. And uh, just sitting there and I thought, oh, just little tiny fart about to happen. And the restaurant behind me, like the seating area, was just all empty. And I've done this fart. And honestly... I threw my voice, but my voice was a fart. And I threw it halfway down the restaurant. And then when it got that far, it made the sound of an accelerating moped. Right. And it took so long to do that. They weren't like the sonic boom the other day. It took so long to do it that, um, that the lady behind the bar, she was like, <laughs> looked outside. And, and I was just sitting there, just about to cry. And I'm like looking around, and everyone's just like, like 
because they yeah. couldn't work out where it'd come from. <laughs> so someone thought a moped had gone over outside. Someone else thought like a chair had fell over. And I just threw it. And I cried so much. I couldn't breathe for laughing. It's oh, brilliant. Oh. And some, you know, things like that, that's what life yeah. is about. I, I remember I remember my boss once. Uh, we Head office wasn't that far away. It was like about a 10-minute walk from where we worked. And he said, I'm just going to nip up to the office. And he walked up to the office and he was standing outside just about to go in, just finishing his cigarette. And he and he said, I just thought, oh, I need to, I need to, uh, I need to fart. And he went like that. And, and just as he was sort of feeling in that way, this girl came out of head office and saw him. She used to work with him. And she went, oh, hi, like that. And he said, I went, <laughs> <laughs> massive loudest fart ever he said but worse than that she was with about 10 people from head office and he went he like spun around and was like oh oh hi hi and, and like he said everyone was just trying to pretend that they hadn't heard it and he but was just mortified and he said i could feel that you know when you get that heat in yeah. your face and he just said it was mortifying he said <laughs> he said the he just he just wanted the, the the floor, but he said she just caught me off guard, and she went hiya, and he went <laughs> yeah. Next week we won't talk about farts, but um, no. let's get get him out of his system now. Um, I I walked Paper Mill Lock to Haybridge Basin in Essex on New Year's Day, and I walked past this posh lady and her grown up posh daughter who was wearing wacky leggings and stuff like that. And I walked past and I went, morning. And the posh mum went, afternoon, actually. I was like, oh, yeah. And got level with her. And then I saw a nice boat immediately. So I stopped to take a photo of a nice boat. And her daughter, again, probably about 30, just done the loudest old horse <laughs> bark, right? Out loud. And she just carried on walking with the mum, chatting away. And, like, and I looked around. I thought, no. And like, come to She just like, just walking on chatting, doing it. I was like, bloody hell. But um, it came up on my Facebook today uh, that I was walking around Prague a few years ago and I put on Facebook, it's like, apparently, if you walk around Prague because it's in a foreign country and you fart, it's all right because they don't understand. <laughs> they don't speak English. <laughs> and I just remember like walking around and my mate um, Raf was just like, don't stop it, stop doing that. I was like, What? We're in another country, they won't understand it. <laughs> Different language. Anyway. That's that same guy had um, he he, he had uh, he was on the train home one night, and you know, as it starts to pull into your station, you get up and you stand in like the 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 like door well bit. And um, well, not at the minute, you don't you keep distance, but normally you stand in that door well. And he said, I was standing there with two women, and all of a sudden, this really bad smell came about and they were all standing looking at each other and he said um like these two women like looked at each other and then looked at him and then did this like scowl and like shook their head and he said it wasn't me and he said i felt so enraged i went well it's not me so it's got to be one of you two. <laughs> <laughs> and he I've said done. it was the most awkward thing but he said i got like this Tourette's moment where i i couldn't he said, because they were looking at me and it wasn't me. And he said, I felt like I want to say something. You should well, get him in there, anyway, won't we? I got on the, oh, uh, yeah. played in the hotel in Benidorm where they filmed Benidorm and, uh, on purpose. And I got on the coach to go back to the airport and was really hungover and just sat there. And I'd done this terrible, terrible fart. And we went to the next hotel to pick people up. And this, this pot, well, you know, like, <laughs> me and my mate Linda go on holiday every year to Benidorm. We love it, right? They got on, these two women. I went, oh, my God, it smells like shit on it. <laughs> and on that note, we'll see you next week. Thanks for your time. And we'll talk Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>